Today, we are going to be talking about Wonder Woman, so stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. I'm here with Matt. His words are like lassos of truth, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and who am I today, Matt? I'm with Joel Shamwow Cunningham. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if people weren't, I guess people weren't listening to our conversation earlier, so they probably don't know why. That's okay. It's a mystery, and people it's are going to be mystery. like, what is he talking about? Why is he shamwowing? Don't him? get shamwowed, you don't guys. Don't get shamwowed. That's the Do point. Do not get shamwowed. Yeah, well, so, for those of you that are uh, tuning in the podcast, welcome. Yeah. And the message of the day is don't get shamwowed. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, here on the show, we do a little bit of a review type thing, and uh, it's a kind of a fan versus critic perspective. Uh, Matt tends to be a bit more of a fan type perspective so yay he's uh he gets excited and yays a lot yep <laughs> I, i'm a yay and i'm excitable and i'm emotional yep he's always tears of joy and sadness yep. just flowing from his face and yep. then <laughs> i'm more of the critic perspective so i like to break things down in a very uh logic intellectual uptight fashion <laughs> It's like you have a a resting Joel face. I do have a resting Joel. I have a resting critic face. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's good. I love that. So (laughs) that's kind of how we do things here on the podcast, and we kind of blend it to give you what we think is a really good, real perspective. Um, So here at the start, Matt, why don't you give our listeners uh, some ways that they can actually get connected to our podcast? Does that sound good? Hello, listeners. (laughs) I'm here to tell you about how you can get connected to our podcast. And there's a number of uh, ways you can actually make that happen. First Mm -hmm. of all, you can find us in the social media universe of sorts. Uh, Such places as facebook.com slash Real Review Media. And you can also find us at Instagram and Twitter at Real Review Media. Always got stuff posted up on there, so check it out. And then also, you can find us on our website, realreviewmedia.com. And you can actually link to all the stuff there, sign up for the newsletter, uh, send us messages, Hmm. um, and... Also, you can reach out to us uh, via email. I, we actually enjoy that. Tell us what's up. Yeah, we T- do. Tell us what's going on. Send us an email. You can email us at realreviewmedia at gmail.com and uh, tell us about some some of your favorite movies, what you've liked, what you haven't liked, and uh, what we should be seeing. And if you disagree with <laughs> us and, and, and or, you know... You want Joel to talk about something else. <laughs> something else. Then just let us know. <laughs> Send us an email. Yeah, I thought you were going to do that. I was actually almost slightly thinking you are going to do that in the style of an infomercial type thing. I was kind of like hoping. Like, Sham, wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, did I, I should at some For point. For 18 it, easy <laughs> payments of sixty two ninety four. We'll tell you about Wonder Woman. Yeah. No, no, we don't charge for this podcast. <laughs> but no, I should tell you at some point about my experiences uh, actually filming a infomercial. I want to hear awesome. all about yeah. that. We'll do, we'll do a separate track where we just break down the. Yes. I will have to say I actually played a dead man. In really? A, in a casket, holding onto an iPad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it was pretty morbid. Okay. It was funny because <laughs> I got the script. I was filming it and I was in it, and uh, we sent the cut of the thing to the client saying like, "Hey, here's the cut that you asked." And I had told them like, "You know, that's pretty morbid to put a guy in a coffin with an iPad." And so I sent it to them, and they're like. Yeah, that's pretty morbid. <laughs> I was like, well, what were you expecting? Yeah, so, anyway, awesome. So what with that, why don't we get into our discussion of the film we are here to talk about today. It's a great film that has just come out this weekend, uh, Wonder Woman. And uh, with this, Matt, I think our plan is to break it down. First half is a non-spoilery Indeed. kind of general discussion, and we'll give a review, kind of a final like uh, number, if you will, yeah. for our review. And then we will move into our spoiler territory, where we'll give you a strong warning and let you know, hey, we're going to move into spoiler territory um, at that time. So, yeah. sound good to you, Matt? Sounds perfect. Cool. Well, would you like to take us in? Let's do this thing. Awesome. Yeah, so Wonder Woman. Uh, brief synopsis here. Before she was Wonder Woman, she was Diana, princess of the Amazons, trained warrior. When a pilot crashes and tells of conflict in the outside world, she leaves home to fight a war to end all wars, discovering her full powers and true destiny. <laughs> Directed by Patty Jenkins and uh, stars Gal Gadot, which yep. is actually how you say her name. Uh, Chris it's a hard Pine. T. Yep. Gadot. Yep. Uh, Connie Nielsen, Robin Wright, Danny Houston, <laughs> uh, David Thewlis, Thewlis. Uh, among Thewl. a lot of other Which talented I actually like. people. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, anyways, so that's that's kind of the deal with Wonder Woman, and mm-hmm. I'm going to kick this thing off. Um, 
I will say this at the get-go. Two things I was slightly disappointed. These aren't spoilers, but um, <laughs> okay. one, I was expecting at some moment they were going to do like the, she's a wonder, you know, like oh, the really? wonder woman. She's a wonder. Like they never did that. She's wonderful. Yeah, probably for their better. I man. got it. We can call her wonder exactly. woman. Exactly. I was expecting that. And then the other thing we talked about this, which they didn't do, which is, again, probably for the better, but they didn't have the invisible jet. Right. Sad. Yeah. No yeah. Well. yeah, one day. Didn't seem like that technology was there. So probably she probably not. gets it from somewhere probably else. Probably not, you know. But Maybe yeah. Barry Allen has something like that. Maybe. Well, if you watch, uh, what's the one? Uh, Legends. Yeah. They actually have a, f- a ship that does cloaking. Right. And I, I'm thinking, maybe, maybe you know, yeah. they got a cloaking ship, you know? You never know. Yeah, so, all right. <laughs> yeah. So Get to your review, Matt. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, Wonder Woman. It's a good film, guys. Mm-hmm really actually enjoyed it and the more I thought about it the more I found myself enjoying it uh, we actually got to see this film together Joel it was our first in a while yeah we so it's been, the last one we saw was Passengers yes <laughs> way so back so it's been a minute yeah um, but I actually I actually find my, found myself enjoying this and guys we've been calling this I've been specifically talking about it. if you listen to it back way on Freak Show Radio months and months ago mm-hmm. I said I think that Wonder Woman is going to be the first critically praised yes. DCEU film. And boy, is it. Yes. <laughs> it's 90, 93% yeah, 93 on right Rotten now. Tomatoes. Yeah. And yes, and it's not just a critic hit. It's also a hit with the fans. It made over $103 million this weekend. Mm. Um, directed by Patty Jenkins, which I thought she did great. Sh- and um, in interviews, there were, they had no deleted scenes. Everything they filmed... Really, was I in didn't the movie. Know that. Wow. Yeah, other than just like trimming, you know, edges. Yeah. Um, and Start and stop. Yeah. Shots. Yeah. The scenes are all there. Wow. That's pretty impressive. That is very impressive. The studio probably loves that. Save them a chunk of money. Right. And anyways, first well, I would make the ki- well. We can talk about that later. But maybe because I think that was one of my minor minor gripes. Was okay. Maybe there should have been a bit more trimming. Right. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Areas. yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's let's start off with Gal Gadot because mm-hmm. first of all, she. I thought she did wonderful. Actually, I thought she did a really good job. Yeah. Um, this is her best role ever. Yeah. <laughs> she hasn't <laughs> been in a lot. No. But she was in that cheesy uh, movie with uh, Galifianakis called Keeping Up with the Joneses. Right. I never saw that one. Um, She's a pretty big newcomer, though. Yeah. She was in the Fast and Furious, the five and six, I yeah. think. Played a side, kind of main side character. I don't know what you right, call right. that. Kind of an auxiliary character. Yeah. But uh, not a lot to inspire a lot of different, not a lot of like inspiring acting yeah. from that. Right. And so there's a lot of, I know a lot of people are very hesitant about her being the main character of this. Mm-hmm. I will say I did like her in Batman yeah. v Superman. Um, I, I thought her scenes were kind of cool. It's like very mysterious. But so this brings it back around. I thought she did really, really well in this. Mm. Um, and that's just kind of one of the highlights of a lot of people that I really actually liked her and Chris Pine. I thought they had really good chemistry together. Yeah, They were really good together. Um, and then Connie Nielsen and Robin Wright and, and Danny Houston actually though. And David Theo. So, so like the main main core people I thought were really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. The story points were really, were, were pretty formulaic. It had this like captain America first Avenger vibe yeah. a little bit. Um, it's kind of the commentary you're hearing from a lot of people. Is it very much felt like a cap, like the first Captain America film? A right, lot of similar beats. And I liked structure. it better than the Captain America film, and the reason why that is Captain America did this really weird montage where it like did this action scene, but it cut yeah. away before you saw any of the action. This right. didn't shy away from any of that. Yeah, there was a lot of visceral, violent, like like you know, action, and it really, really worked. And it was just. As an emotional person, (laughs) coming from the emotional side, the fan side, I thought this movie shone, Mm -hmm. shined, whatever that word (laughs) is, shimmered, shimmered, glistened. Yeah, I thought it did really, really well on that (laughs) in that side of things. Yeah, Um, I was really connected with Gal Gadot. She's the first DCEU character, Mm -hmm. main character. Um, When I say that, I mean outside of like the main Suicide Squad people, um, Batman, Superman. um, That I really like cared for like she's a person that i'm really rooting for i actually care about what happens to her yeah and and it was it was just really exciting to actually grasp onto a character early on in the movie and then be excited to see her journey as she progressed and she wasn't like just a stereotypical i'm gonna go beat everybody she's very emotional and very 
uh, kind and caring and compassionate about everybody she came in contact with, and she wanted to help everybody. Yeah, it's very pure and very like naive, but also very um, sincere in her like naivety. You know? Yeah, I cr- I I can get that, and that was a side of because I don't know a lot of Wonder Woman. Yeah, I don't know too much about her from her comic book run or anything like that. I kind of wish I knew a little bit more at this point. Right, I, I, she is one of the bigger names of the dc universe for sure yeah you know it's kind of like batman superman and you have her and the flash and they're kind of like the big big you have aquaman but he's kind of at at least at this stage he's a little bit you know not quite as big you know but i don't know we'll see how this film he's under the water yeah there you go he's (laughs) he's a fish out of water um but you know that's her that's her in this film so um i would also mention two other characters we didn't we that are kind of key parts of the film um but lucy davis who plays etta his secretary right um, which i love her she's a great actress i've seen her in a couple different things she's more of a british um actress which a lot of these people are you know yeah. british actors but um she's great i think she's really she was in like the original office and everything like that and um also alana and, and naya who played dr maru who's kind of like one of the main antagonists of the story um, she's got that weird face mask thing. Doctor Poison. Like a, yeah, Doctor Poison. Which I was like, that's yeah. cool. They like give her a little slit so her mouth can like move. She looked like a like a when mannequin. Yes, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> a Marriott doll. Yeah, 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 marionette. Marionette doll. There you go. So I, I thought they were really good with this as well. Um, it, were you? Did you have more you wanted to talk about the positives? No, I, I yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I was just gonna kind of riff off of what you were saying because I yeah. did. There's a lot that I really liked about it, and mm-hmm. the more that I thought about it, I, they dive into. Uh, right from the opening get-go, Greek mythology mm-hmm. uh, and stuff that I didn't know about. And I did a little bit of research on Wonder Woman after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, this is more in line with the New 52 reboot. Right. Um, as opposed to the in original. 40, right? In oh. 1940-ish kind of era. So, yeah, before then. Or, sorry, after. This is not that. Right. Wonder that Woman. was the original creation. And then she they kind of re-brought her back. Right. And her origin story mm-hmm. is more in line with New 52, too. We, we won't talk about that here. Okay. Yeah, That's, that'll be later. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> what other things did you like? Um, I thought that the I, I'm right on with the acting. I thought um, music. I really did. I know you kind of were a little bit spotty on her like theme, kind of like da 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 da. I thought that was really good and very impactful. I thought yeah. they used the music very well at certain times. I really, I felt like this film. They could have approached this. One of the the main issues that I've had, I think, with like a lot of the DC films, is that they don't have a thematic core that kind of drives them forward that connects you to what's going on with the characters you know the characters all kind of have their own little story to them yeah. which is obvious because they're kind of big name characters that have a ton of history in the the dc universe but they don't have a thematic like even with um you know suicide squad or you can maybe make the case with uh batman versus superman that it's like mothers. I don't know. Like maybe that Martha. Was the theme. Yeah, Martha. Yeah, I didn't know that name. Yeah. But you know, with this film, there was a very strong theme of, you know, violence and war and the, the, how man has kind of created these differing sides and issues and that kind of darkness that can come out of a human being and what that does to other people. Yeah. And so there was a thematic element that was very good there. And then I really, really, really enjoyed overall the relationship between Gal Gadot and Chris Pine's character, so Diana and Steve. And it really felt like they did enough, probably maybe a bit too much, but they spent a lot of time really developing that as the core right. element of the story is that relationship as he's kind of bringing her into the real world, but she's got this naivety that is also kind of endearing. Yeah, yeah, Because absolutely. she sees things with clearer eyes and she's more open to like seeing things as they should be yeah. versus how they're forced to be in Steve's world, you yeah. know? And they kind of had a good influence on each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? He softened, whereas she kind of hardened yeah. a little bit, maybe sadly. But, and I thought that was really enjoyable um, to kind of, that brought things to fruition to a head at the end of the film. Yeah. Which was very important. There was a, uh, just emotionally, it was, there was a great payoff um, just yeah. as in, in the film. Um uh, you, you say that like uh, her being naive or maybe ignorant to things was endearing and absolutely was. <laughs> there's yeah. a couple of there's a couple of parts that I really, really enjoyed that were just like a, a two or three second thing that's like, oh, OK, that really shows, you know, uh, that side that she really doesn't have any clue you know, yeah. about what's going on. Yeah. But you're right. They both they both taught each other and learned a lot and, and like kind of they're on opposite sides yeah. of the, yeah. the fence as far as perspectives are concerned. Yeah. Um, I it, was, it was interesting to me too. They bring you like right into the, it, it was funny cause I was wondering if they were going to like tiptoe into her kind of world mm-hmm. and everything. And at first it was very clashing to me. You mentioned the whole like Greek mythology stuff and mm-hmm. how that kind of tied into our modern ish 
that obviously wasn't modern. It was kind of, you know, an older era, but right. how that ties into that world. And I've never looked at that that generation of America and thought Greek mythology. Right. And so it was kind of odd at first to bring those two. You know, it talked a lot about Ares and, you know, the gods and the fighting. So it was a bit odd and clashing, but it eventually worked. Yeah. And I think it eventually messed pretty, meshed pretty well with the two. Um, I think at the heart of this film, what really worked well together was the chemistry amongst all the different characters, as well as a very solid plot progression. Everything made sense. It was there was a reason for it being there. Now, I think one of the gripes that I, that I've had, and we talked a little bit about this, but is there was this extent. It was a little too long. Yeah. In a couple of areas, and yep. I felt like you could have tightened up, um, especially in some of the beginning stages. That of was the, film. the biggest gripe for me too, as far yeah. as it, it was too long. Yeah, yeah. and it, it felt like they could have tightened up the beginning a little bit more. And you would have still gotten the same understanding and feeling about the relationship between especially Steve and Diana and the different characters and still gotten to where you needed to be by the middle of the film is when they really start breaking into more of the big action type set pieces. Because there's really not a lot of action up until the center of the film. Right. There's like one really kind of pretty awesome scene in the the beginning. beginning, Yeah. And that's what I was saying. They like jump right into it in a way. I was thinking that they were going to like... You know, I figured Steve would kind of find out about her and then there would be some time where he's like living on the island and experiencing things. But it's like, no, we're just going to jump yeah. right into him. You <laughs> right. know, everybody knows about it. Um, so I thought that was cool. Um, I'm trying to decide if we, if you want to start talking about things we maybe didn't like. Yeah, as much. no, let's go. You already started. So let's, yeah. let's keep going that cool. route. So I think that was kind of one of my minor gripes. Um, at the same time as me saying that I, I did like the overall thematic um, element of the film because it's been missing in DC. I still think that they could have gone a lot further with it. Mm-hmm. It still kind of felt a bit soft and simple. And some people probably would disagree with me on this because maybe with a DC film, maybe you're not expecting for it to go to deeper depths and levels with thematic elements because it's a comic book type film. But I mean, I would give you the example of, you know, a lot of the, the Batman films, you know, the Dark Knight, and it goes into some deeper elements with the characters and yeah. their thinking and their mindsets and breaking that down. Whereas with this film, it was kind of just like, well, war is bad yeah. because it's bad and bad things happen and people die and that's bad because it's bad. And it's like, well, yeah, I agree. War is bad. But like, show me that. You know, show me. But there was a couple scenes where you kind of see some people suffering a little bit, and I, it's not like I needed to see people like suffering, but I needed to see the impacts of the 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 darkness of war throughout all of the character stories and all of the characters' progression. And I only really got that from from Gal's character a little bit. Yeah. And then I only, uh, as well as one of the um, one of the side kind of characters named Ian uh, Charlie, who's kind of this sniper guy who's like freaked out now about shooting people which they never really go into detail no they didn't explain that at all and so that kind of became a bit of a thing for me i was like well i want to know why these people are the way they are i want to know what their story arc is i want to know where they're going and there wasn't a lot of chris pratt's character and gal Gadot's character chris pine chris pine sorry (laughs) <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. So I'll just say Steve and Diane. Yeah. Steve and Diane's characters, they have a very good story arc that's kind of meshed together and it, it flows throughout the film and it works well. But that was kind of the only real arc that was there for the overall story structure. And it's strong and it's yeah. impactful and it's necessary. I just wanted a little bit more. Mm-hmm. It's sad because it's like, I feel like you got to like the the most like the big chunk of what you needed, but there wasn't enough that flourishes and additional things to kind of make me go like, okay, yeah, that's awesome. They've got their own yeah. thing going on. They've got their own thing going on. So that's kind of some of my initial not niceties. Did you have any additional thoughts? Yeah. No, so I, like I said, my biggest thing was, I just thought it was too long as far as how to trim it. Um, like, yeah, there were some scenes kind of in the first half that I felt like were just a little too long or overplayed, especially some of the comedic moments. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, my biggest thing was I, I didn't care about any of the auxiliary characters, like the team that gets assembled to go on that mission. Yeah. Like you're talking about the sniper, the uh, the Native American, and the the other guys. Yeah, so, he's kind of a spy. Right, he's right, He's a right. sweet talker. He knows right. how to sweet talk in different languages. So like they 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 spent a lot of time like introducing you to these people, yeah. like as if they were setting up some payoff about their backstory. Like you said, with the sniper, right? You didn't get anything with that. And no. so it was just pointless. I felt like what's the point of setting, taking so much time to set these people up. Right. Even his receptionist character. Right. I, mean, I liked her though, because I felt like most of her humor is the stuff that I felt like did land. It did. Yeah, um, for sure. And I, I'm, She's a great comedic actress. I right. Think. She's been in a lot of really funny kind of roles. So she, 
she was great. And the, that kind of brings me to the other point. I felt like a lot of the humor that they went for in this movie did not land for me. Yeah. Uh, I would say maybe, I would say maybe 30 to 40% of it actually worked. The rest of it didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that might just be a me thing, but, um, other than that, I, I and I, I felt like some of the humor that didn't work for me was just because they spent too much time, you know, beating that joke yeah. to death. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, it was kind of funny. I giggled. Okay, okay, let's stop. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. That's kind of how I felt a little bit. Yeah. Um, but there were a lot of little moments too that I thought were really good. I think Chris Chris Pine's Pine is really good with some of his like little, uh, his moments like when they're um there's there's a scene it's in the it's in the trailer they're laying in the boat and and uh she's like yeah zeus formed me out of clay and he's like oh yeah that's yeah. that's neat you know <laughs> or whatever funny. he's like oh okay yeah you could tell he's like eyes glazed over like, like this is a crazy woman yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. stuff like that i thought was pretty good and um there's a lot of little moments like that um there's a there's a scene i won't spoil it but with like an ice cream cone that i really like kind <laughs> it of, was really sweet yeah, yeah it was really cute and that's like <laughs> that's where i agree with you for sure i mean they've made wonder woman you know diana her character is she's she's lovable in yeah. a way you want to see her succeed you want to see her do well because she's got a genuine a genuineness to her yeah whereas like with batman and superman they're both like i'm angry I because know. of the events which have befallen that's me. and it's like yeah okay. and that's really it as far as my uh critiques i guess i guess yeah. you could say on that um other, as a whole this movie was very hopeful to me very yeah um light in a way that we haven't seen uh the dceu yeah be- at all you know it's not it wasn't like a bunch of brooding people it was Mm -hmm. someone who's um filled with hope optimism wanting to be you know to make a change in the world for the better of mankind how things should be and very compassionate very loving very caring very kind yeah um and just wanting to do things because it was the right thing to do um yeah the best best word that i've actually heard to describe this film so far is elegant okay um there, it was a review that I've actually I've been reading a few different reviews, and they said intellectually it was a bit not quite. It didn't reach big heights intellectually. Like I said, right. again, it's like war's bad because war's bad. Yeah, and <laughs> it's bad because bad things happen. But yep. elegant, it it really had a sense of um, fullness and sophistication and uh, niceties and happiness and good things, and also mixed with some really not so good things. Mm. I mean, especially when it came to some of the gassings and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Um, and it was funny that it was in a weird in a weird way. This isn't spoiler because we know that it's it's dealing with you know World War One type era stuff, but they're killing um, Germans, but they're not Nazis yet. Right. So just, and this it was weird for me that we're killing Germans, not Nazi Germans. <laughs> so it's like every yeah. time we see Germans being killed, that's always Nazis. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I guess we'll just kill Germans in general now. Yeah. So yeah, um, but yeah. So overall, I think I I, I enjoyed it um, more than I was expecting. Yeah. No. Which is nice. No, it is good and. I went again, and you know this. Everybody knows this. I went in with with high expectations. I always got to yeah. temper them as I go in, and I felt like they, for the most part, met yeah. my and expectations. I, so I would say I do want to mention this as well. I think I don't want to harp on this too much. It does feel like this is the kind of a situation where everybody's freaking out about this because of more the context of the film, right? Because it's a good film. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I liked it, um, but it's not like an amazing, in my opinion, mm-hmm. film. Um, and it feels like a lot of the context of the situation is well. For one, DC has never made a good a good film for the most part. You well, know, the, the new DC film. yeah, the new DC sorry, yeah, the new DC cinematic is they haven't had a good one yet. So a lot yeah. of people are like, oh my gosh, they finally done a good one. This is amazing. And yeah. so they're like it ringing really high. <laughs> and the other thing is, it's the first Wonder Woman film. So everybody's like, it was the same thing with uh, the Captain America film when it first came out. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was like amazing. Yeah. But everybody's like, it's Captain America. It was amazing. And I'm yeah. like, well, it was good, but it wasn't like it wasn't like Winter Soldier, right? Like I haven't watched Captain America, the first one since Mm-mm. you know and this is another film i'm probably not going to just like go and watch again after they release it on you know dvd i think it needs to be i think they need to make this film yeah and i'm glad it's as good as it was i feel like it's a good launching point yeah for, for sure. the series though and it, it intrigues me and once it makes me want to know more about wonder woman yeah for sure so why don't we go with reviews and then we'll go into like spoiler charity what's yeah. your overall review for this i gotta go 88 88 yeah okay. i'm gonna go 88 on it that was cool. 
uh, I was impressed with it, and I, this is for the first time. I am I'm excited to see more of Wonder Woman in the DCEU. I think awesome. I think it's the first time. <laughs> I left Batman v Superman. Like, just stop making Batman and <laughs> Superman movies. <laughs> yeah, just give it a break for a little while. You've hurt us so yeah. badly with those films. <laughs> so uh, for me, I'm gonna go a little lower. Um, I'm gonna do 83. Okay. Um, kind of, it's on the cusp. It's like an 83.5. Yeah. It's like right oh, in that gotcha. area between a B and a B minus. Um, it went up in my estimations in some areas, but then it went down in my estimations in some other yeah. areas. Um, I think if they had had a more solid mixture as well of action sort of throughout the film, mm-hmm. it would have been a little bit easier to handle. There right. was a couple, like the big action set peaks, it's almost at the very beginning. It's the first few minutes into the film. And then nothing really happens again. Until it's the, like there's action. There's a couple little minor action set pieces. Right. It's then. like action like and drama, but like a lot more emphasis on the drama than you'd think. So a go ton, into this yeah. movie thinking that – don't think that it's just an action scene after an action scene. And I, I feel like maybe that was the wise thing to go, right, route to go with this. Yeah. What, you know, whether we thought we could have had a little bit more action – just because all the other movies have just action set piece, action set piece, action right. set piece. Right, and I wasn't one, looking for that. Right. I think of another, though, like getting to know the universe type film, which was Thor. Yeah. And obviously that's a complete, you know, Thor, he's a, he loves war and battle, and so he's going to have these epic And he battles. loves like, coffee. He I'll loves have coffee. another. I'll have another. <laughs> yes, <laughs> breaking things. But he that, that film I love watching, and it's a rewatchable film for me, and it does have a very good mixed set of action and drama that kind of flows throughout it yeah. kind of there's stuff that happens throughout the film and it's realistic mm-hmm. whereas this film it's kind of like big action and then we're gonna wait till the end yeah. and it fit it made sense but again it, it didn't leave me as interested and you know right. excited to kind of move forward yeah. so cool. cool so with that then we're gonna move into our spoiler territory so spoiler yes. alert so if you have not uh watched the film and you want to just go ahead and turn off the podcast now is the time to do so Gonna give you a countdown, and then we're gonna jump right into our spoilers. So we're gonna count down from a hundred. From yeah. <laughs> why don't we start closer to one hundred? Yeah, why don't we start at five? Ninety nine, <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one, and we're gonna move into spoilers now. So, Wonder Woman dies. Wonder Woman dies. No. I'm just kidding. We're no, just Steve kidding. Steve dies though. She doesn't die. Wonder Woman doesn't die. Steve Trevor dies. Steve Trevor dies. In a very heartfelt like yes. moment that you actually feel, and that's where some of the emotional payoff I think comes yes. into play. If it weren't for that. I think the film would have been a much lower ranked film for sure. me if it weren't for that emotional core yeah. of that relationship and then the separation of that and mm-hmm. how that has kind of formed who she's going to be. And you can see that you've seen her in, you know, um, Batman vs Superman. And you kind of knew that there was like kind of this sadness to her yeah. and there was this underlining story. And I think they did a very effective job of kind of explaining where that comes from. Yeah, I was a bit concerned because you know whenever you go in, and this is in a way, it's a it's a prequel mm-hmm. to the character that was introduced in Batman versus Superman, to the whole DC exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and so there's always that concern that like, how are they going to handle those pre- pre- prequel elements well enough to match up with what your expectations were right. for the story that they presented, and they did a really effective job at doing that. And so when he died, I actually did get a little choked up. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie, I didn't cry. I didn't. I didn't cry, Matt. I didn't I cry. saw you, Joel. <laughs> I know. I thought that I was, saw you dabbing that was your eyes. salt on my popcorn, okay. not tears. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, it definitely kind of choked me up a little bit. And it, it there's a payoff there because, it again, it makes her a relatable character in the sense that you've seen her kind of throughout the course of the story. You know, you see her building, 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 and yeah. she's always got that naivety, but... She's building with like when she runs out there and she's like I'm she's like taking the the brunt of the attacks you know when she's running into the city and she's you know attacking everybody and she's not killing anybody which I yeah. thought was really interesting she's just kind of like the, she's well, she's still trying to she, maybe people, some people I'm died I'm pretty sure people probably. died yeah but she's not like you know breaking arms and like yeah. you know yanking heads off which yeah. she probably has the power to like break everybody's neck pretty right. much and she's just kind of punching and kicking and knocking people around. Um, and she's not using weapons for the most part, like guns. And she's like hitting people with a sword, but it didn't look like she was like stabbing and killing them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but she's 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 coming into her own, and then you have the the breaking of her, which kind of happens when you you're introduced with the um, so sort of the God of War character, which is Ares. Twist Ares is Sir Patrick, which that uh, how did you feel like they did with that twist? I thought it was all right. I kind of suspected something with him because he seemed a little too Too interested. Yeah. But um, I will say this too. This is the other twist in the film um, that was part of the new 52 reissue of Wonder Woman is that she's actually the daughter, that Wonder Woman is the daughter of Zeus. Right. 
Um, and uh, her mom, what's I forget her name, was Connie Britton or Nielsen? Uh, Hippol- Hippolyta. 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 Yeah. Um, so she's a demigod. Yeah. And so what's cool about this movie is that she doesn't know this. And her mom obviously knows it. So she's kind of shielding her a little bit. And right. like, you know, we don't want you to understand the fullness of your power because that's where Ares is going to finally figure where, where you are to get you or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So she is, a, she is a weapon that Zeus left behind to, um, kill Ares. Yeah. Um, and what's cool about the movie is you see the progression of her not really knowing what she, what she is, or she thinks she's one thing, and then she like progressively learns more and gets right. more powerful. She's, she's been like, very what? sheltered, yeah, you know, yeah. And so as she's kind of out and about in the real world, she's finding she's finding she has powers. Yeah. Uh, she can do awesome things, yeah. And uh, and that kind of goes to that part where you know she finds out the twist to what you know who Ares is, and right? It's, you know the werewolf from right. uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> there you go, yep. Lupin. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Professor Lupin. Um, uh, so that was both handled well and mishandled to me. It actually kind of was a bit. I wasn't. I was expecting that Ares would show up, mm-hmm. but I didn't expect him for whatever reason. I didn't actually see that one coming, which is good for me because yeah. usually I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm usually the one predicting that kind of stuff. So that was a good twist for me. But the the main problem I had with that is that it they were trying to go for almost this emotional angle that humans are deep down good people that are flawed, dude. Due to Ares right. and the gods tampering with their mindsets, and I didn't really get the point of that, right? Because she she battles him, and she st- first she kills um, Ludendorff um, under pretty crazy means, yeah. And you know he's not Ares, like you just know that he's not he's not the battle god, the god of war. Sorry, and she kills him, and then nothing changes, and she kind of is disheartened, and she's saddened, and everything becomes clear, and yeah. humans are bad, and da 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 da, and they've done these horrible things on their own, and then um, and then Ares does present himself, and I don't really get. I didn't really get what that emotional shift did because then it would have it would have felt like immediately she should have gone back to the idea that Ares is causing it all. Yeah. But she doesn't do that. She kind of goes to like, well, now I feel like humans are actually bad. You know what I mean? And then it, she's kind of struggling with that. She has like the self of, doubt, like right. and about just. Kind but of it like, didn't make any sense because she'd held on to that for so long, and then she killed the guy, and nothing changed. But then you presented with the God of War, and it's like. Well, then shouldn't your mindset immediately go back to, well, yeah, he's the one causing it all. And she doesn't really go back there. She more kind of breaks after like the loss of Steve and him blowing up and playing, which was really emotional because obviously they had a really good relationship. And I thought that was handled really sweet and mm-hmm. really nicely, especially like you know, the dancing and the snow. And yeah, it was yeah, really yeah. cute. And it felt very real the way that they it wasn't forced. You know what yeah. I mean? It felt like they had a connection there and a spark that kind of built over time. Um, they were obviously attracted to each other, but it was more than just a physical attraction, there, which I, I thought that was handled really well. Right. Um, but then he dies, and then immediately she's like, well, people are just bad now because I feel that they're bad, but it, it didn't make sense because <laughs> the God of War was right there. And then she does end up killing him, which I thought was cool. It was a bit, like, ridiculous, I thought, as well, that, like, she suddenly has these, like, lightning powers that, like, she had never discovered. Right. And, you know, he's a guy that's fought in countless wars. She, he battled Zeus, Right. You know what I mean? And she's able to basically just overpower him as a demigod through means, through reasons, which I thought was a little forced, but I was okay with yeah. because obviously they're not going to continue on with them being there in the Marvel uni- or in the DC universe. Um, but then he dies and then it's kind of like, I don't know if you, you recognize that, but there was that weird moment where like all the German troops are like smiling and they're kind of <laughs> hugging the Americans. And I was like, I so didn't see did he? The, I didn't see the hugging part. They I were just, like hugging each really? other and they were smiling and they were like, you know, being buddies with each I other. I thought those were people on the same side. Like, no, those oh, were all hey. the German troops because there was only the the main cast of like the Americans who were like. Okay, we need, a, the, we need an instant replay. We do need to go through yeah. that. We're going to pause <laughs> the podcast and go watch the movie. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> all right, and then we're back. Okay, okay, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. So, but there was that moment where they're all smiling and they're kind of hugging and they're like at peace and everything like that. And that didn't make sense to me because then did Ares cause them all to hate each other? But he said he was just like ghosting these thoughts into their brain. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so it just didn't, I didn't know what was happening with the ending. And it kind of, I was there, I was on the ride. And again, because of Steve, it worked for me because of that emotional core of the moment. Yeah. But if it hadn't been for that, I would have been like, what's going on what's here? What's happening? Yeah. What's happening? You know what I mean? I still cared about Wonder Woman. I still cared about character, and I think even more than Batman or Superman where they're at right now, I really want to see her right. in her universe and trying to be successful and, and make sense of things and, and do good 
good superhero work, right. you know. But that left me with the ending kind of going like, "What I, is yeah. going on?" I am. I totally agree with you. There's a little yeah. like uh, I don't know about this, yeah. but I was able to overlook it for the most part. Um, what I find in a lot of movies is is what are you able to overlook? <laughs> you know, yeah. that's kind of the question is what kind of things, if you're looking at a balance between good, bad, what's going to tip the scales one way or the other more yeah. for you kind of a thing. That was a big hit for me. Yeah. I think that's what kept it from being a high B for mm. me. It was really that. Okay. Okay. So, but so sorry, what were you that saying? I didn't even really like consider as a big negative. Yeah. Um, I, I will say I'm, I'm really curious. Patty Jenkins already signed on to do the sequel. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad she's really going to, continue the story seems like she's got a good handle on the on the situation she did Um, yeah for i'm i'm kind of curious to see what happens to wonder woman between the end of world war one and then where she's at we see there's these tags at the beginning and end of the movie where it's in present day after the events of batman v superman right and um that's true because what captain america which is again different universe but he kind of catches up right you know so what what is she doing during this time? Cause she didn't, she obviously didn't, a lot end, of pushups, Matt. she didn't, <laughs> she didn't end world war two. Yeah. At least that we know of. Cause she's Aries wasn't, Aries wasn't responsible for that. She's, she's eating ice cream cones. Yeah. Eating ice cream cones. <laughs> that was, you, that she's was, catching up on really a, cute. she's I mean, catching up on a lifetime yeah. of not eating ice Which cream cones. Which I really enjoyed. I kind of wish they'd had a few more moments of that right. type of stuff where she's like going through the city and discovering new things. And yeah. she's like, you should be so proud of yourself for yeah, the ice. That was like the yeah, cutest. That was thing. the best part. Yeah. Um, I love that part a lot. And then yeah. the, um, so I'm curious to see as to what's going to happen. Like if, the, if they do a sequel, is it take place? Is it another prequel of sorts, but yeah. after the first one, or right. is it like, uh, after the events of justice league? Cause <laughs> yeah. justice league comes out what this, this fall, right? Yeah. So what is that going to look like? And what is that done to her mindset as far as her powers and abilities are concerned? Cause I felt like I saw more powers and abilities and wonder woman, when she's just finding out For about sure. her powers than in Batman v Superman. Right, and that kind of ticked me off a little bit. We talked about that because when we saw her fighting in Batman v Superman, she seemed kind of just like an underpowered Superman. Right. Like she had strength and obviously she's got the lasso and she's, she's got the god. shield. She's literally she's, a god. Yeah, she's, she's got god power. She can shoot lightning out of her. And that's what didn't make sense. Was that only because Ares had been shooting thunderbolts at her like or she, something? I'm not sure. And she like absorbed the power. But you saw that moment where she's getting attacked by Robin Wright and she kind of goes, Gah! and like her power yeah. like exudes from her. But when she's fighting in Batman versus Superman, it's really just, she's just really strong is the big thing. And she's got, you know, the the gear to battle him. I, I'm I was curious. Expect, after that, after this film, I'm like, she's basically like Superman. She just can't fly. And even at the end of the the movie, she's like floating. She's kind of like floating through the air. And even at the very end of the film when her battle with Ares, like Ares is flying and she's kind of like doing this like half floating Floating like thing, thing, which is odd to me because we know that she can't, at least in my understanding, she can't fly. For what I can tell, book history, she can't fly. I mean, that's why she's got the invisible jet, right? (laughs) (laughs) Like she needs that because she can't fly, right? So, so New Fifty Two. If you guys are familiar with the comics, uh, maybe enlighten us a little bit. I'd love to hear some thoughts. from Yeah, send us an email. New there that have read the comic book, maybe a little bit, and maybe if people's got some thoughts on the ending as well, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. So, I what uh, one thing I do want to talk about a little bit because we haven't really talked too much about this, but what did you think about the action set pieces? And there wasn't a ton of them. I've heard a lot of people kind of complaining that the ending started to feel again a bit like Batman Superman esque and very muddled and just big things blowing up and being thrown around everywhere. I okay, so out of all of them, I'd say there's three big scenes. Yeah. You had the beach in the middle, then you had the like trench slash like little town. Yeah. Because that was kind of like one. Right. Um and then Which was that was my favorite that actually. That was awesome. The the the, the storming the Germans yeah. in the town. That was really awesome. The where she launches off and like destroys yeah. a whole bell tower. Yeah, like, like that yeah, was cool. When I, oh my God. Yeah, that was yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um and then uh the end you had the end one. I thought the end one was definitely the weakest. Yeah. Um the I, I I still thought it was better than the Batman v Superman stuff. It was it still it was coherent to me. I understood it. I saw what was happening, um, and it it did it it was just more generic. It did yeah. kind of it was a little bit more in line with that sort of thing. Right. Everything was really dark. A lot of just explosions and nonsensical things flying and stuff like that yeah. sometimes. But here's how I would have done it. This actually would have made more sense to me. And I'm not sure why they did this necessarily. But I was not expecting. Um, Sir Patrick to be the final like look 
of Aries. He didn't have like a godlike demeanor, a godlike look to me. You know what I mean? Nothing against uh, <laughs> nothing against <laughs> true, David though. Thewlis, but he looks like an old <laughs> curmudgeon-y British man, you know? And so when they put the armor Balding on him- and a, and a right, mustache. Right. So what I think would have worked well for me, and this would have also played into the whole like having action kind of throughout the film, yeah. is have him discover her- much earlier, because he does when she shows up at the at the uh, the, the, the government. Yeah, he discovers her. Right. Yeah. Have him be somebody that has a different form in his like godlike right. form and attack her a few times over the course of the film, and she can actually like lose. Right. Which shows her kind of learning her powers as she's kind of getting beat down by this guy, and have her kind of get away. And so it builds up this tension yeah. about them being, you know, adversaries as well. And it shows them like, and that would have allowed them to incorporate different action set pieces kind of throughout the course of the film. I would have enjoyed that yeah. personally. And then it wouldn't have felt like the ending, it would have just been kind of this tacked on big climactic yeah. battle with the big baddie. It would have been like, okay, we've been building to this. And there still was build. Yeah. And there was a lot of like kind of forward momentum to that big epic climactic again, which that was more of the story um, emotional pull though yeah. and I will say this as well as the action I really for the most part enjoyed it I thought it was effective and good and especially with the combination of the music like I talked about um, was really good I didn't like a lot of that speed ramp effect and the slow-mo speed ramp type stuff mm. it kind of got a little bit too much after a while um, I felt like it was good that they were honest about the fact that like these are people that are using antiquated technology right. and they can get shot by a bullet and die I thought that was really yeah. cool and both sides that they could get shot by an arrow and that would kill them and they were very good, you know, with that. But it just like with some of the speed ramping stuff, I mean, especially that scene with Robin Wright where she like jumps over the the thing and she's got like the three arrows and the boulder and she like hits all three of them, you know what I mean? I thought, and, okay. I was like, come on. Yeah. I, a little too much of the speed ramp. I didn't mind it pretty much everywhere else. I just thought the beach scene had a little too much. Yeah. That was it. That was, there's was maybe one or two dismounts where they're flipping off their horses. Exactly. I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can like, flip off your horse and land. You don't have to be in slow-mo while you're doing it. But yeah, I, I, for the most part, I didn't mind it. That, that was, was kind of my main, that was that when we talked about that, if, if like I had another sort of minor gripe with this film. And again, this is a film that we both, Matt and I really enjoy. But, yeah. um, I feel like there was too much at times. Like if they had taken away some of those speed ramp scenes and made the action scenes like more straightforward, yeah, just kind of people fisticuffs and fighting each other. John Wick. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, then it would have felt a little bit less. I thought the only time that they used it super effectively was in that middle kind of big battle. Oh, you know what was then, cool? Yeah. Was um, that scene where they're doing the flashback with Chris Pine's character where he steals the journal yeah. and he steals that plane and then throws the little bomb into yeah, the yeah, bomb yeah. hanger and explodes. I thought that was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. especially how he like dips the plane <laughs> to the side and he yeah. just like drops the bomb. He's like, all right, bye. And blows it up. Which, I like that. That, that, that was, was kind of fun. I, I like their characters. I like the two, the, those two bad guys because it's like Ludendorff and Dr. Mara and they're, Maru, sorry. And they're kind of like the evil, like, look what I've yeah. done here. I've created this evil can Concoction and it like was very comic booky. There was only one scene that was like that, and it was like when they threw the gas in there, and they're like, they don't have any gas masks. Yeah, but like even when she's testing in that same scene where he steers the journal, she's like testing the the poison gas on the guy in the mask, yeah. and they're like, watch as I eviscerate this man. And <laughs> it was just really, it felt kind of funny, mustache silly. twirling. Yeah, and I heard a couple people say that they kind of wish there was a bit more of that. Oh, really? I okay. I would never expect that from a DC film at this point that right. they're gonna do like tongue in cheek, silly like Marvel. I yeah. would expect that from a Marvel type thing where they're going to be like humor, action, over the top, like pop type yeah. excitement. They're way too st- set in this like, I don't know what you would call it, almost music video-ish, like over the top action epic yeah. type style to to do something like that. But um, yeah, so any any last stuff here, any good things that we want to talk about spoiler-wise that you didn't, you weren't able to talk about before that you really enjoyed that you couldn't specifically mention? No, I, I think we got at all the endings, uh, learning that she's a demigod and just way more powerful than I had anticipated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's, I think we hit it all. Cool. Awesome. So, well, with that, then we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here on The Real Review. I want to go ahead and give you a couple ways you can get connected to the podcast. Then again, uh, here again at the end of the podcast. So um, some good ways to get connected. You can check out our website, which is realreviewmedia.com. Uh, we're posting a lot of cool stuff up there and we got the newsletter you can sign up for. And then additionally, we've got our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash realreviewmedia. You can also check us out on Instagram and on Twitter, which is at 
Real Review Media. And uh, again, we'd love to hear from you, your thoughts on the film. Um, we didn't get a chance to see also the other major <laughs> release, Captain Underpants. I'm not even sure how that's performing at the moment. But, um, you know, maybe you want to talk about Wonder Woman or maybe you got a chance <laughs> to see Captain Underpants. We'd love to hear your thoughts on anything you had a chance to see over the weekend. Um, so drop us an email, realreviewmedia at gmail.com is that email address for you. So, all right, then uh, anything else for us, Matt? No, we totally got it. All right, well then, it's been real. It's been real.